So we've been telling you a lot about Wolfpack, and you, I might know the process by now. What we're trying to do is get a constitutional amendment to get money out of politics, and we think Washington is too corrupt. But luckily, uh, the founding fathers were geniuses, put something else in the Constitution saying when Washington gets too corrupt, you can actually call for a convention for a specific amendment, and you do that through the states. And you get 34 states, two-thirds of the states, to call for that convention. You have a convention, you get the amendment, you don't need Washington at all. Now, this is a really hard process. We We've been updating you on it throughout. You got to have it introduced first of all. You got to get co-sponsor support. You got to get it to a committee. You got to get it out of committee. Then you got to have one of the houses pass it, and then another house pass it. Jesus, it's really hard, right? And you got to do it state by state. So uh, we've been really lucky, and I've told you these great updates before. In California, it passed in the Assembly. We're waiting on the Senate there. In Illinois, it, it uh, passed in the Senate. And that was really dramatic. They needed 60% of the votes to happen there. They had to delay the vote, and at the last second, they did the vote, and they barely got past it by one vote. In Vermont, we were told that it was impossible in the Senate side by an ally of ours who meant well. She just said you don't have enough senators on the Democratic side to be able to push everything through committee, let alone win on the Senate floor. Uh, but actually, we did win on the Senate floor, and it was because because uh, volunteers from all across the country called in to constituents in Vermont, which then called their state reps and senators. Again, really hard work, but they did that hard work, and it worked. And on the Senate side, it passed 25 to 2. And that's what was called impossible before. In fact, it was overwhelming, right? Now, dramatic news. It has just passed the Vermont House. First state on the board. There it is. Vermont, the first state of the union. It has actually passed uh, the Connecticut. both houses. Where are you, Connecticut? <laughs> right next door, <laughs> kind of. And, uh, and this is a huge moment. Uh, look, this first step is the hardest. Yeah. And that's why I, I, it's been so hard getting to that first state on the board. And we got 33 others to go, and I know it sounds daunting, like, oh my god, another 33. But the first one was supposed to be impossible. So I think it could only get easier. <laughs> and what you will see, and what we saw in Vermont, is once you engage in the process, you pick up momentum. Now, let me tell you uh, about the votes and about uh, the American heroes here. As I said, in the Senate side, it was 25 to 2. And then uh, uh, it just passed the House, 95 to 43. Uh, now, you might think, well, Vermont's a fairly progressive state, and, and hence it was a little easier there because uh, you, know, you didn't need the Republicans. No, we, need, we did need the Republicans, and the Republicans came in strong. In fact, uh, my favorite speech, and there was many great speeches and many heroes I'm going to tell you about in a second, actually came from a Republican. It is Representative Vicki Strong. She talks about her son uh, who passed away in Iraq uh, defending freedom and why she voted for this resolution because of that. Watch. I stand to say that I will vote for this resolution and let me tell you briefly why. I believe this resolution supports the process of democracy and I believe that it's a hard battle and it's a fight to continue to have democracy. Uh, I've told this story before on the House floor but I'll tell it to you briefly that my son Jesse, when he died, he was defending the Iraqi polls for their very first election. And as the word came to our family that he had been killed uh, that night, uh, days, just days later, the first Iraqi people stepped out of their homes for fear of their life and held up their finger with purple ink on it for the first time that many of them had voted in women. And that fight for their democracy cost my family a lot, but it cost the world a lot. And, and democracy is hard work and it's messy, but our founding fathers came up with the most brilliant way for us as Americans to enjoy the fruits of freedom and to continue to fight for that. They knew that people can become corrupt, that human nature can become corrupt, and because of that they crafted the most brilliant plan for our country to hold on to that hard-fought battle for democracy and today people are still fighting that battle um, overseas here in this country and I'm proud to say that freedom and democracy mean a lot to me but I know it does to all of you but I'm proud to say that 
I defend that freedom tonight and I'm proud of our democracy and encourage those of you who have wondered whether this resolution is worth worth voting for tonight to think about the cost of our democracy and the fact that this resolution I believe is actually just pushing us forward into the opportunity to continue to voice our opinions as Americans when our own government is, is faulty. Vicki Strong living up to her name there. That was phenomenal. Saying, hey, listen, you know, my son didn't go over there uh, to Iraq to die for freedom, and then we're not going to have freedom and democracy in this country. Well, we're going to get up and we're going to fight back. So, for those of you who are discouraged about national politics, look at these wonderful leaders at the state level uh, Democrats and Republicans working together saying we're tired of it 96 percent of Americans know that money corrupts our politics and it's time to end it uh, you know there's there's a Republican in the country that I love and there are many on this list the people who are currently serving in a state legislature like they've already had to go through the process of raising a little bit of money like 50,000 100,000 something like that in some states but when you go to them and you ask them okay so you you're an ambitious person you want to go places how do you like the idea of spending the rest of your life raising millions of dollars for every race and not just that but when you run in your next election how do you like knowing that the person you run against is likely to have 10 million of their own dollars yeah. they can throw into the race you don't want that you want to be able to run based on your ideology based on your ideas we're gonna give you that uh, that option That's even true, if your ideas are exactly the opposite of ours we're gonna fight for you to have the same chance to put them in front of the American people and fight based on actual ideas uh, that is so true, and that's why what Jenny's doing has more than just a fighting chance, because everybody is equally exhausted by the process. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a, uh, a congressman the other day from Kentucky uh, about how exhausted he is. Just, he said, man, I, I, it's coming around again. Mm -hmm. I gotta do this again. I, I love being in Congress, but I, I'm just tired of this. I'm tired of raising money. I'm tired of having to deal with that every time. And See, it's that, not just raising money, it's the pressure exerted on you by the, by the John National Boehner and Eric Cantor to, amount, to, yeah. to I, I, you wanna be taken seriously? Uh, yeah. in this party and in this Congress, you go raise money. I talked to a U.S. Congressman who said, uh, I, and I asked him, do you have lunch with your fellow Congressman? How's the camaraderie there, uh, Democrat or Republican? He said, are you kidding me? If our staffers caught us having lunch, lunch. instead of making phone calls to donors, <laughs> yeah. they, you know, they'd kick our ass. And yeah. so that's what they do all day long. That's not democracy. That's kissing up the donors all day long. And if you're a true conservative like Vicki Strong clearly is, you don't want crony capitalism. You don't want rich donors buying people off. That's the exact opposite of what you want in a, in a free marketplace of ideas. Mm -hmm. So she voted the right way. Now, there were many Democrats who also voted the right way, including Donna Sweeney, who was maybe the most critical person in this entire process. Uh, she's the chair of the government operations, and, uh, and she was critical in this vote here. She also spoke. Let's listen to her. Our committee asks you to join us in taking this bold step. And yes, I do think this country listens to Vermont, little Vermont. I was here when we passed civil unions, the proudest moment of my life in this, in this body. And look now, civil unions, huh? That's passe. Vermont does lead, and they do listen to us because we are leaders. We're independent. We were the first constitution to do away with slavery to say no slaves. And that all happened where? Windsor, Vermont the birthplace of Vermont. <laughs> so join us. Join us, please. Let me quickly read you uh, a list of American heroes in Vermont, the new founding fathers and mothers who are going to help reclaim our democracy. Speaker of the House, Shap Smith, uh, Representative Donna Sweeney, as we were just telling you, Chair of Government Operations, House Majority Leader Willem Jewett, Representative uh, Maida Townsend, who uh, reported the bill uh, to the floor uh, for a Government Ops Committee and led off the debate with a strong endorsement of the resolution. That was critical. Representative Christopher Pearson, leader of the Progressive of caucus, Representative Vicki Strong, who you heard from, uh, Representative Sam Young, who gave a fiery speech on the floor, excellent speech, Representative Joanna Cole, Representative Debbie Evans, member of the uh, GovOps committee, and these are all now member of the Gov GovOps committees, uh, the committee that he came out of, Representative Patty Lewis, Representative Ann Mook, uh, Representative Linda Martin, uh, 
Representative uh, Michelle Consejo, and uh, then Representative Dennis DeVuro is the ranking Republican on Government Operations Committee, and he voted for the bill in committee and on the floor, so he was absolutely critical as well. Representative Mike, Mark, uh, Mike McCarthy was fantastic, Representative Jim McCullough, Representative Tony Klein was uh, terrific as well. I've got a quote from him in a second for you guys, Senator Bill Toy Doyle, and then yes, Ben Cohen from uh, uh, ben and Jerry's, he came down there, he testified, he was critical, he's got a loud hmm. voice in Vermont. Larry Lessig, professor from Harvard, who's the godfather of this movement, uh, came uh, from Cambridge, drove in to testify to Vermont, made a big difference, he's uh, a, a huge voice in the legal world saying this is absolutely necessary, you must pass this constitutional amendment, and uh, doing it through the convention is the right way to do it. And now finally some people who are not uh, in the uh, Senate or the or the house in Vermont, um, uh, Ben Brown, uh, he's a Vermont farmer who just gave phenomenal <laughs> testimony. But that's what I love about this. A farmer comes in and wows the crowd and they actually listen to him. Imagine in the national level, they're like, oh, and then a farmer came in and testified. Like no one would even show up at that yeah. committee hearing. And in Vermont, they cared, they showed up, and they listened to him. And then I got to go back to the Senate here because Senator Jenny Lyons is the one that started this whole thing. It was her resolution to begin with just couldn't be more critical there from day one. Senator Westman was an absolute hero. He's also a Republican, worked with us in every way, worked with the Democrats, the Republicans, true bipartisanship. And Mike Mineta is, uh, is our director of organizing at uh, Wolfpack, and he led this uh, movement in Vermont. He went, uh, actually traveled to Vermont. He's been there, and he brought it home for us uh, and worked with all these great people to do it. So. Every person on that list was absolutely necessary. We got them all to work together uh, so that that little state, Vermont, could make a giant, giant difference in the country. And finally, I like Representative Tony Klein's vote. He said, Mr. Speaker, I vote yes. Because when many of our elder statesmen lawyers serving in the legislature suggest we shouldn't go forward, and many of our young representatives say, yes, go forward, I know I've made the correct choice for the future of our country. <laughs> so enough of a lot of the skeptics and the cynics saying, no, it's okay, let's just keep the system that we have. Uh, there are young people who all across the country, and specifically in Vermont, saying, no, we need change and we need it right now. This system is corrupt and we must fix it. This must feel really good to Mike Mineta, who's been yeah. just working so hard at this too. I mean, so it's there's a so huge many victory for him. Yeah, there's so many great guys, of course, at Wolfpack. There were volunteers, you know, Walker, New Jersey, who made the first call in and got Reverend, uh, Reverend Stephen Barry to go switch some senators' votes, and 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 Ryan Clayton, who's the executive director, who works so hard. Uh, I love uh, the <laughs> emails we get because of Ryan and some of our others, where they say. Boy, you guys are aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> I like great. one that said that we had a mountain army. Uh, mm -hmm. They say you're type A. Uh, <laughs> I love this quote. Uh, I had a really rough weekend politically. We don't want to give away who it is, but this uh, person said in Vermont government, getting so many calls from my constituents <laughs> must be rough. <laughs> well, and I love that Wolfpack can now take this and go to other states and say, this isn't some crazy idea. We just got it done in a state. You could be the second one. Uh, you, know, you don't want to be left behind by the progress of the rest of the country. When do you get Wolf Pextachio ice cream from Ben Cohen? When's it going to be? That, I think, <laughs> Wait is when you're, really, you're going to be on the map. <laughs> okay, now we're having a conversation. Yeah. We've got to run that by Ben Cohen. And uh, But finally, I hate to bring it back to Mike Mineta. Whenever I get down, and there are many moments because it's a very hard process, I always think about Mike Mineta in the snow in New Hampshire, like years ago, two years ago. Like we're. We were a mess when we first started. There was no organization. I had forgotten to hire an executive director. <laughs> we're getting all these volunteers in. We don't know what to do with them. We don't have a, a functioning website. It's a mess. And there's Mike in the snow holding up a sign in the middle of New Hampshire saying, I'm here. Right? Uh -huh. and, he, and he stood a post until uh, people rallied around him. And man, people standing a post makes a difference. And here we are. This is just the beginning. And I'm going to see you at the convention.